Welcome to MTV News Update for today, Friday, March 9, 2018. In the news tonight, Freddie Kisun claims Jagyo knows the killers who wreaked havoc at Lindo Creek in 2008. Fire destroys all boys' stung house, two left homeless. Burby's teenager succumbs after ingesting a poisonous substance. An engorged male sex worker remanded for robbery with a violence. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Now for the news and details. Former President Bar Jagdio is being accused of having knowledge of the persons responsible for the brutal slaying and burning of the eight miners at Lindo Creek. Columnist Frederick Kassoon, during his testimony at the Lindo Creek Commission of Inquiry, claimed it was geographically impossible for the fine man gang to maneuver from Christmas Falls to Lindo Creek to commit the heinous act. Yanis Abrams opens tonight's newscast. The third public hearing of the Lindo Creek Commission of Inquiry was held on Friday, March 9. It was then that columnist Frederick Kassoon was called to the stand by counsel Patrice Henry. Kassoon, during his sworn testimony, stated that he was given a call by the owner of the dredge that operated in that area, Leonardo Arrochium, requesting to meet him as soon as possible. During the discussion, Kisun claims the dredge owner, who is also the father of two of the eight dead miners, brought maps of the mining area and pictures of the burnt bodies. Kisun told the commission, Arokian related to him that it was geographically impossible for the alleged killers Rondell Feynman Rollins and his gang to move from Christmas Falls to Lindo Creek. And then he began to take us through uh, the journey of if you're at A point, how you will get the B point on that uh, demography. And he continued that meticulously against juxtaposing his movement of the terrain with the police explanation as to how his employees and his two sons met their death. It, I, I would say it was a it was an extensive, meticulous exploration of cartography. Kisun further detailed to the commission that Arokian believes his son and employees were killed by members of the security force. The columnist then affirmed that Bar Jagdio, who was president during that time, has knowledge of the perpetrators. Well, I ask if you if you, you know that I know that person, yes. And you know another person you know that spoke to that the aid as well. As you said, the aid to us. Uh, the person who facilitated yes, the meeting. Yes. Facilitated. The yes. Meeting. You know both of them. I, I yes. I would know the aid more than I know um the person, the other person no. The other person is, has never been a friend of mine. I just know him. In fact, he sought me out in my activities as a social activist. I wouldn't say he's my friend. You would think the person who gave the president the information, I'm no. Just, um, yeah. I wouldn't want such friends, Justice. Also called to the stand was Onika Butts, the reputed wife of one of the deceased, Dax Arokia. The woman revealed that on June 21, 2008, she received a call from her brother-in-law stating that her husband had died. But further said, no one had given her any information since she was four months pregnant. The woman claimed to have visited the Ministry of Home Affairs to obtain information about her reputed husband. Where you went to and how you were able to get an audience with the Minister then of Home Affairs, Mr. Rui. It was on breakdown, I think. I think it was on breakdown. I can't really remember right now, but I went into him. I spent 30 minutes right home. That man just looked at me like silently, had nothing to say to me. Whereas I was asking him questions like, I need answers. If it was your child, wouldn't you want answers? And he just, his mouth was sealed, nothing. And I was just forced to leave because I couldn't deal with it. He wasn't saying anything to me, so I just left. 
The Lindo Creek COI is the first of many others, according to the government, that seeks to clear the air about what transpired in the early 2000s, a period filled with violence, which President Granger dubbed the Troubles. Commissioner retired just as Donald Trotman is heading the Lindo Creek COI. Reporting for MTV's News Updates, I am Yanis Abrams. A fire of unknown origin has gutted the home of an all boy stung family. A woman and her husband are left homeless with only their clothes on their backs. Find out more in this report. Proprietor of the home, Herman Norton, told me the operatives that he has lost his entire life's earning. The man said his neighbors claimed that the fire may have resulted from a burst electrical wire. Norton said he and his wife was about to head off to the hospital when the fire started. When I pulled the door, I see the whole house in fire. So I can't go in nowhere no more. And she asked me what I said, fire, don't come up here. And I bring she out and she steps far down there, sit down there. And my daughter is living over here. Then call me daughter. And she's there inside there. And she gets them black out. And this is how you know the, the fire. The whole place started fire. And I come out and call my nephew over there. He tell me yeah, something, he broke first with some wire or something. But I don't know. I went on in the house then. The man said he could not get to save his material possessions. Norton said the flames prevented him from entering the building. Everything lasts in the house, every single thing. We never save nothing. And I see the fire run out back. I said, I go in there, the heat, the thing, heavy, heavy. Every house, whole thing, everything. Get burned up. Much about 50,000 all in the house, whole thing left, left in all the house. The house is, a, is, a, is, a, is a 25 by 20. He and his wife are now homeless. In recent weeks, Fires of unknown origin destroyed several buildings, leaving more than 30 people homeless. A number of agencies and the government chipped in to assist those affected. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. Following days in the New Amsterdam hospital clinging to life after ingesting a poisonous substance, Roshni Ramlakan succumbed late last night. Details in this Lashana Gomes Cornelius report. Senior Superintendent of B Division, Commander Lyndon Alls, via a telephone interview with News Update, related that 19-year-old Roshni Ramlakan unfortunately succumbed after her condition turned for the worse. Ramlakan is the woman who ingested a poisonous substance and is also alleged to have given it to her one-year-old child. Commander Alls revealed that the victim's child is still under close observation at the New Amsterdam Hospital in a stable condition as relate to him by doctors of the institution. We, we, are still, we are still taking statements. We were hoping that she would have pulled through to, to get her, her um, abortion, but then unfortunately she has passed. So whatever statements we have now, we will now have to compile a report and for that to legal advice. As it pertains to the police's continuous investigation into the matter, Commander Alves affirmed while legal advice on the matter will be sought to further determine the way forward, additional statements are still being taken from persons who were close to the victim. Well, there are no questions, the statements were taken, but I am not privy. What is the content of the statement? I have not seen the statement. When that file gets to me, well, then I'll be in a position to speak on his statement. Right now, the statement is in possession of the detective who is conducting that investigation. According to initial reports on the day of the incident, Ramla Khan allegedly told her mother she had ingested a poisonous substance and had given some to her child. The body of Roshini Ramla Khan is presently at the hospital's mortuary. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Cornelius. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, 
and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. <laughs> the circle starts with solid support and a smile. This is real life. With its ups and its downs, this is going the extra mile. And the feeling you get when you can help someone along their journey. Through the twists and turns, we're here. This is Western Union, making sure your support reaches its destination. This is Western Union, moving money for better. Pritas Fashions. For all of your exclusive Indian wear, check us out at Pritas Fashions at 183 Bar Street, Kitty. We have a wide variety of shalwars, gararas, saris, three-piece quarter suits, bridal wear, children outfits, and accessories for all occasions. Pritas Fashions, located at 183 Bar Street, Kitty. Contact us on telephone number 227-8644. That's Pritas Fashions. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. The Ghana Bar Association is again throwing its weight behind the Acting Chancellor of the Judiciary and the Acting Chief Justice to be appointed in the positions they are currently filling. The association says it is pleased with the work the two are doing. Let's hear more from Nikhil Jandu. President of the Ghana Bar Association, Kamal Ramkaran, during an interview with media operatives this morning, said he believes that the two acting heads of the judiciary should be appointed. Ram Karan noted that the Acting Chancellor of the Judiciary and the Acting Chief Justice have been executing their duties in an excellent manner. The President of the Association made these statements whilst attending the first oil and gas law training conference at the Ramada Georgetown Princess Hotel. statement which we issued recently, which was uh, a little bit controversial, got a, a strong response from the government. Uh, you can see here that we are very confident and we feel happy with the Chief Justice and Chancellor that we have and we hope that the government will recognize this. That the lawyers are happy with the persons we have acting and we would like to see them confirmed. Yes, yes. We're, we're very confident in their abilities and their hard work, and they, they're doing a tremendous job in the judiciary. Ramkaran also added that President David Granger has the power to appoint someone outside of Guyana. However, the Bar Association's president is adamant that the legal fraternity is pleased with the work of the two heads. We are confident in the people we have acting. We work with them from day to day and they're doing, as I said, a tremendous job both in the judiciary of doing the cases and hearing all of the matters, making improvements as well as doing things like this, extracurricular activities. The Chancellor and Chief Justice have tremendous energy and you can see it. He also noted that the clear operate of the backlog of cases in the judiciary has been complemented by the appointment of two temporary justices. Ram Karan says matters are being heard as early as 8 hours 30 in the morning 
and as late as 17 hours in the afternoon. The new civil procedure rules have meant that matters are coming up far quicker than they used to come up. So matters are, are being gotten rid of. Uh, you can also um, recall that the president appointed two temporary judges. All of those measures are clearing the backlog up and um, helping us to have the matters which are being filed now because there are matters, old matters, and there are new matters being filed every day. So the new judges and the hard work of the judiciary is helping all those matters to be cleared up. President David Granger and opposition leader Bart Jagdio had met on January 3, 2018 to discuss the appointment of a substantive chancellor of the judiciary and the chief justice. The president convened a second meeting on January 7, 2018, just over a month after the initial meeting. However, to his dismay, Jagdia was a no-show at that meeting. Minister of State Joseph Harmon, during a post-cabinet briefing on February 8, said that President Granger will not let the work of the judiciary be held in the balance or be stymied. The president has nominated Justice Kenneth Benjamin to be the next chancellor of the judiciary. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The construction of sea and river defense is being done. While making that statement, Minister of State Joseph Harmon noted that works were already ongoing even before the floods on the west coast of Demerara. Here is more in this Yanis Abrams report. During the post-cabinet press briefing, Minister of State Joseph Harmon announced that the government has allocated multi-million dollars contracts to various engineers to construct sea and river defense from regions 2 to 6. The minister noted that this was planned and budgeted before the recent spring tide, which lasted from February 7 to March 5. These contracts will have been in, in gestation long before that. And so basically now the fact that I'm just reading them out now shows that these are matters which we considered long before any specific high tides. So that this is a plan, a programmed approach by the state to providing adequate sea defenses for the persons who live along the coast. And this is um, all the way from Region 2 on to Region 6. So that these are expenses which, were, which had been planned budgeted and are now being executed. Harman believes the present overtopping of water which wrecked havoc in certain villages along the west coast of Demerara was due to global warming. He further mentioned that the government continues to caution citizens about their environment. He noted drains need to be cleaned and buildings must be constructed on regularized lands. This is really, as a government, we have to deal with all the concern and the interests of all of our peoples. And therefore what that means is that if you are living in a regulated community, it is in your interest to see that no irregular arrangement takes place, that people don't start to build houses all over the place, so that when the high tides come, they lick it down and they lick down all your places as well. We have to basically build within structures and build within the guidelines set by the Ministry of Public uh, Infrastructure for these matters. On Friday, March 2, several villages on the west coast of Demerara were affected by massive spring tides. Those villages included Leonora, Stewartville, and Den Amstel. It was also reported that the Leonora Hospital was closed over the weekend due to the water seeping in the building. Some sections of the defense were also broken. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. With gender equality becoming a resounding echo by women across the nation, the preliminary findings of women's rights under national and international law were presented by the Women and Gender Equality Commission. In addition to this, First Lady Sandra Granger claims that two-thirds of women in Guyana are trafficked. Here is more from Sandy Ramatar. Guyana has been listed as 117 of 188 countries 
In the Human Development Index in 2017, according to the United Nations Development Program report, First Lady Sandra Granger, who continues to champion women's rights, says there is a need to investigate the root causes of deaths of women. She was at the time reflecting on the agonizing deaths women experience, majority of the time by a male counterpart. In 2017, Region 6 accounted for more than 50% of the total deaths of women in the country as a result of violence, while two-thirds of women in the country are said to be trafficked, according to the First Lady. Women in these situations live in permanent fear, with access to neither peace nor security. The house and the community in which they live are a battleground, and they are subject to verbal, physical, and psychological abuse. In addition to which, the Counter Trafficking in Persons Unit of the Ministry of Social Protection reported that 96 victims of tr human trafficking had re been reported. Two thirds of these victims were female. Attorney at law Melinda Janke lauded the implementation of the Sexual Offenses Court, Night Court, and the Family Court. However, she says there are a number of gaps which should be corrected to ensure there is gender equality. She pointed to the lack of judges to fill the existing courts and the need for more court on the coast than in the hinterland. To use law to change society's economic priorities. To use law to help change our culture and values to entrench equality for women. As I said, this is not a fight between women and men. It is a struggle by decent people, the majority of men and women, and it is their struggle to educate and change a minority who simply do not know how to behave. The existing gaps between the national and international law on the women's rights were also pointed out. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Coming up, Guyana Relief Council gives hope to families affected by fires and government says Sussex Street drug bond deal will expire soon. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. SEM is one of the 19 brands from Caterpillar. Today, it is in more than 80 countries, offering the ideal cost-benefit, with the loaders being the protagonists of the sector. This is the wheel loader SEM 638, a three-tone load capacity wheel loader with 1.7 cubic meter bucket, produced at the Caterpillar facility in Qingzhou, China. The bucket versatility allows the wheel loader to work in several applications, fulfilling needs of customers across the world. As we can see, this is the rock bucket. With several protections, it's perfect for construction and aggregates applications. SEM. The performance you need, the support you expect. Distributed by ISG, Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc.
This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. The Guyana Relief Council early on Friday assisted more than seven families affected by the recent Pike Street fire with hampers filled with food items and other important household utensils. Here is more from Lashana Gomes Cornelius. Treasurer of the Guyana Relief Council, Barbara Walrand, explained that it is the custom and mandate of the GRC to reach out to families affected by disasters of any type and magnitude. According to Waldron, the GRC hopes that the items proves to be beneficial to the recipient families who have all lost so much in the fire which occurred on Wednesday last. The Guyana Relief Council, as you know, is a non-governmental organization and our objective is to offer almost immediate assistance to persons who would have suffered from fires, floods, natural or, natural or man-made disasters. And when we heard about the fire early Wednesday morning, the Guyana Relief Council, we visited the site, we saw the devastation, and we took down the names and all the particulars of the victims so that we could give them things that they would need. And uh, we asked what their needs are. Of course, we are not in a position to rebuild homes or any such thing. And as such, we give them clothing, food items. Waldron indicated as long as there is more need for further assistance in whatever way possible, the Guyana Relief Council is committed to stepping up in that regard and give as much support as possible to those families as can be afforded by the council. We are still helping those in Plaisance whose homes have been destroyed. As long as we have the funds and as long as we have the foods available, definitely we would. And what we try to do is to give them enough that would carry them at least for two weeks, two weeks and onwards. The clothing, we give them clothing that is particularly fit for the trade. If you're a teacher, we give you clothing, you know, that you could make yourself presentable to your, your job description. And that is what we try to do. Not just give because we have to go, we give with a purpose, right? And I would like to take this opportunity also to thank all our donors, right? All those who support our fundraising activities, corporate Guyana, because without their help, we would not be able to do what we are doing here this morning. The Guyana Relief Council over the past years has continuously been able to assist hundreds of families who have faced a variety of natural and unnatural disasters. The GRC even has its very own shelter set up, that of the Yvonne Hines Home of Hope, which was initially established in 1993 to accommodate families facing similar disasters, needing a temporary abode until they can fully get back on their feet. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Minister of State Joseph Harmon, during a post-cabinet press briefing held on Friday, revealed that the lease of the infamous Sussex Street drug bond will expire soon. Here again is Lashana Gomes Cornelius. As the government seeks new initiatives to enhance the capacity and implement new measures for the nation's health care system, more efforts are being made to ensure the sector reaches its true potential in providing adequate, efficient and reliable health care. Just recently, Minister of Public Health Volda Lawrence met with German industrial conglomerate Siemens on plans to propel and modernize Guyana's health care sector. Despite these efforts, there have been continuous complaints from patients and individuals alike that the public health sector is failing them by not having appropriate and sufficient drugs on hand when such is needed. Over the past years, stocks of expired drugs housed at several of the nation's storage drug bonds had to be thrown out. In wake of that, the government has cut major ties with several privately owned pharmaceutical bonds as efforts were made to strengthen the function of its storage facilities. However, back in 2016, the then Minister of Public Health, Dr. George Norton, had admitted in the National Assembly that the government had entered into a multi-year rental agreement with a new firm, Linden Holdings Company, to store pharmaceuticals. Coupled with that, based on thorough investigations and findings, it was discovered that much of what the minister had said proved not to be factual, as had claimed by Shadow Minister of Health, 
Dr. Frank Anthony. Dr. Anthony had claimed that Minister Norton had misinformed the National Assembly. In addition to that, in August of 2016, Minister Norton, along with the Ministry of Public Health, were brought under major scrutiny as to the controversial leasing of the Success Street drug bond. Minister of State Joseph Harmon admitted that the government still stores drugs at that facility. I believe, yes, it is still in use. And um, there is a process that had been activated for the lease for that bond to be terminated. Uh, but I believe that it is, still, it is still in use and that process is basically going through. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The People's Progressive Party is again bashing the government for taking credit for foreign-funded projects which were initiated under the PPP administration. Leader of the party, Bar Jagdu, claims the PPP projects are now bearing fruits. Sandy Ramatar with the details. The General Secretary of the PPP, Bar Jagdu, is lambasting the government, claiming the administration has not been able to attract foreign investors. Jack Deofort claims that the Granger government is only piggybacking off the projects that were initiated by the PPP government. All of, the, uh, all of these projects, and they can't even get them off, get them, get them going well now. So, no, no new investment. They're just picking up old things, brushing them off, and marketing them in, in this regard. He pointed to the Sheriff Mandela expansion project, Machu's Ridge Manganese plant, West and East Coast Road expansions, among other projects. The East Coast Road, we left that. We left money for the bypass road that they haven't started. The money for the specialty hospital that they're putting in other areas now. I mentioned 180 million US on the Griff. Um, all of these things have been left by the PVP. He believes the government lacks the ability to attract investors into the country. Meanwhile, Business Minister Dominique Gaskin had admitted that majority of the ongoing projects were those initiated under the past administration. However, when Guyana hosted its first oil and gas summit, over 500 persons attended, including international businessmen. Government has also claimed that a host of persons has shown interest in purchasing the Enmore Sugar Factory. Sandy Ramudar for MTV's News Update. Still ahead, Guyana to get its first Ganga Temple. Persons urged to make donations to make this a reality. Stay tuned. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Visit Gaffer's Ironmongery Department for all your building needs. Bolts and nuts, zinc plated, high tensile, anchor bolts and treaded rods. Package nails for your convenience, screws for wood, metal and concrete. Building a fence, we've got cast iron railheads and decorative fencing, gate slides and pivots, razor and barbed wire. For your carpentry needs, we stock tight bond, wood glues and evil stick. Hasps and staples, hinges, butts, catches and brackets, and a wide selection of modern design cupboard handles and knobs. Secure your property and loved ones with quality Yale products such as padlocks, available in several sizes and types. Knobs, lever, deadlocks and decorative door locks. Moving heavy loads is easy with caster wheels and hand trucks that cater for any job. For construction, we've got scaffolding along with ladders, multi-purpose, extended, fiberglass and step ladders too. For everything you need on the one roof, 
It's Gaffoos, the name you can trust. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. As the country moves to develop its oil and gas sector, a sensitization conference is being held with the legal fraternity. Find out more in this report. A two-day training and sensitization conference in the oil and gas sector is being held for the legal fraternity at the Ramada Georgetown Princess Hotel. The conference is being held under the theme Exploring the Legal Framework in Oil and Gas Law. Acting Chancellor of the Judiciary, Yonet Cummings Edwards, in addressing the gathering said that the birth of today's conference resulted from the limited knowledge of the upcoming sector. She noted that after reading a book on the law of oil and gas, there were several strange terms. The Acting Chancellor believes that the legal fraternity needs to update and educate themselves about the complexities in the upcoming sector. We the bar and the bench have seen that vision. We have seen the need to sharpen our legal skills using the powerful weapon of education. And we are pleased today to welcome our faculty members, our local experts, and to welcome everyone here as we embark on further studies and the regulatory framework of the oil and gas industries. Minister of Natural Resources, Arthur Trotman, highlighted several key milestones and challenges which the country faced and continue to face in the advent of oil production in 2020. Minister Trotman said neighboring Venezuela had issued two presidential decrees which could have limited Guyana's access to its exclusive economic zone. Trotman told the legal minds that they should take these matters into consideration in the not too distant future. In that decree, they declared that all of the territorial waters, which we know to be ours, belong to them. And I, I asked, I paused because I asked you to consider that fact very, very keenly in your deliberations over the next two days because that event in and of itself had a lot to do with the events that transpired to the year after. The Natural Resources Minister also updated the legal fraternity on the country's move to establish a Department of Energy, a draft sovereign wealth fund, and an occupational health and safety legislation, among others. So in 2018, the work continues. We are examining the idea of a national oil company. Uh, we have received advice that we should not have a national oil company. We have also received advice that we should have the National Company and government is working on that. We are also developing a scientific institute with the help of the government of Mexico, the Petroleum Institute of Mexico, and Vice Chancellor is aware of this, and we will be partnering with him on that. We intend to establish an offshore logistics base for several of them from the coast of Guyana. And of course, I advised the President last year that we need to move towards a standalone agency a Department of Energy, it may change its name to the Department of Petroleum, but the idea is, as is the case in Trinidad today, that we have a ministry that is solely responsible for matters of petroleum and energy. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Millions is needed from the public to support the building of the first ever Ganga Ma temple in Guyana. The huge venture is being piloted by the Guyana Devi Joy the Association. Sandy Ramatar has more. The Guyana Devya Jyoti Association is ensuring their dream of a Gangama temple comes true. The temple, which is estimated to cost $36 million, is expected to be funded by the business community and the public. Pioneer of the idea, Dolly Singh, says the temple will be located at Craig on the east bank of Demerara. Singh says the structure will be reserved for spiritual rituals such as prayers, sacrifice, baths and pujas. Because this is dedicated solely for the purpose of going into the water, into the ocean, taking your ritual bath and then come out and having a murti of Gangama there to uh, make your offerings. As such, the public's support is necessary to ensure the temple is built. 
Those willing to lend their support can donate to the Guyana Difficulty Association's account at the Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry. Yes, we have an account with GPTI and um, it's under the name of Guyana Divya Jyoti Association and um, you can deposit your money there or make checks payable to Guyana Divya Jyoti Association. For contact with me is 266-5617 or 692-8991. Once built, members of the public will be welcomed to bring their pandit and perform their pujas. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Guyana will now manage the Guyana Shield Facility and Fund. According to Minister of State Joseph Harmon, Guyana has accepted the position and the Department of Environment will be in charge. Here is more from Yanis Abrams. Cabinet has approved the proposal for the government to be the institutional host of the Guyana Shield facility and the Guyana Shield fund. Minister of State Joseph Harmon stated that Guyana has accepted the offer and is now positioning itself as the major global player. The GSF, as it's known, supports the global significance of the Guyana eco region and will facilitate the financial transfers from international community and international organizations and those responsible for maintaining the ecological and cultural integrity of the Guyana Shield. The Guyana Shield facility, GSF, is a multi-donor facility for the long-term financing of national and regional activities to protect biodiversity within Guyana's regions. The minister said it will be headed by the Department of Environment but was unable to provide the state of the fund currently. Um, the fund basically will be at the Department of the Environment. Um, it's basically a, a small team that manages the fund. And these are funds that are garnered from international agencies um, for the purpose of the um, management and operation of the Guyana Shield. The fund was managed under the United Nations Development Program until December 31, 2017. The fund was set up in 2000. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Sonia Noel Foundation for Creative Arts, along with the Women's Association for Sustainable Development, will be hosting its third annual Women in Business exhibition beginning March 10, 2018 at the Pegasus Hotel. Kippany Jordan filed this report. News Update spoke with Dr. Sonia Noel and learned that the Sonia Noel Foundation for Creative Arts is in partnership with the Women's Association for Sustainable Development will host its third annual Women in Business Expo. The exhibition, which starts on March 10 from 10 a.m., will last until March 11 and will be held at the Pegasus Hotel. For the first time since the exhibition is being held, the Women Across Borders event was incorporated into the expo you know and we have a lot of women in small businesses which is even more powerful I'm just gonna say that um, so I am really thrilled to be part of a team that is providing this platform that women wouldn't ordinarily get the small business women would not ordinarily get something like this to build their clientele because it's very difficult to actually have a budget for business I'm a small business I know that uh, advertising budget so events like these really propel you gives you visibility and you, you build whatever that, that you're building on while on the topic of promoting women in small businesses, Dr. Noel spoke highly of her Making Styles Boutique. Yes, Making Style Boutique, it's much more than a boutique just making you look pretty. It's a place that affords you the opportunity to look good from the inside because we have also courses like with self-confidence and image building and all of that. And then you can actually, if you want a photo shoot organized, we can organize that. If Whatever it is, you're like, oh, listen, I want a family portrait. I don't know what to wear. I don't... We organize also. We have a lot of services that are attached to making style boutique. It's just, it's a very service oriented business, not just the product. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for regional and international news of the Guyana Stock Exchange as well as the Demerara Harbor Bridge schedule.
relationship difficulties, depression, family challenges. Grief and loss are some situations in our lives that can cause us to feel unlike ourselves. Are you facing any such situations? Have you considered counseling? It is time you talk to a professional counselor. Let's talk. Call the helpline on 223-0001. 223-0009 or 223-0818 to talk to a helpline counselor near you today. Your emotions are important. Introducing a new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty. This is what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on Friday, March 9. A 22-year-old male sex worker was on Friday brought before Senior Magistrate for Bayou Azor at the Georgetown Magistrates Courts to answer to the charge of robbery. It is alleged that Stephon Blades called Stephanie on March 7 at King Street, Georgetown, robbed Joseph Jules of 600 U.S. dollars and 40,000 Guyana dollars. The unrepresented man denied the charge. Police prosecutor Simone Payne made no objection to bail. The magistrate released Blades on $75,000 and adjourned the matter until March 28. Meanwhile, a 26-year-old footballer was on Friday remanded to prison for the offense of robbery with violence. Joseph Osborne, called Cat, appeared before Magistrate Sheridan Isaacs Marcus and denied that, on September 22, 2017, at Waterfront Port Kaituma, he robbed Francisco de Santos of a quantity of gold valued $3 million, whilst making use of personal violence. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield made no objection to bail. However, the magistrate remanded Osborne to prison until March 14. And finally, nine Venezuelan nationals were on Friday fined and ordered to be deported to their homeland after being placed before Magistrate Sheryl Isaacs Marcus for entering Guyana illegally. The women all pleaded guilty to separate charges. Particulars of the charge alleged that the women on March 8, 2018, at Etrin Bang Cayuni River, entered Guyana by sea and disembarked without the consent of an immigration officer. The magistrate fined each woman $30,000 or 60 days in jail after which they will be deported. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 763. Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbor Bridge schedule. Your weekly entertainment guide is next. Stay with us. Eh, eh, BB is way girl with some.
much Windex for clean windows. All them fancy curtains. It's not even Christmas. Hi, girl. Mind your own business. I got big plans. But, BB, yeah. your house don't even have windows. Eh, hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carrying me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind you business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. Need a vacation? Thinking of leaving the country? Then visit Millennia Travel Agency and book your flight today. We are located on the top floor in the City Mall at Camp and Region Streets. We book flights for Caribbean Airlines, Suriname Airways, Copa Airlines, Liat, Fly Jamaica and all major airlines. We also book hotel and cruise packages. Visit or call us on 225-7354 for more information. Millennia Travel Agency for all your travel needs. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better? At Valvoline, for the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine. Backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood. And welcome to MTV News Update Entertainment Guide. We begin with Fitness Challenge 2018 that's all set for this Sunday at the National Park. I caught up with the promoter and he will tell us about this event. We're going to have uh, very, the same sort of athletes that we had from last year. Uh, the little bit of a difference that we have this year is we have the Surinamese coming in. And um, you can expect to see some really exciting events. We have about five different events which we like to call workouts. Um, for the athletes to compete in. Um, they'll include weightlifting, powerlifting, endurance training, uh, mixed martial arts training. Uh, that's the sort of thing that um, CrossFit entails and these athletes are, are all CrossFit athletes. Um, the one that I'm really looking forward to seeing is event number three where they're gonna have to be jumping over uh, the wall and then carrying the strongman Atlas Stones. Uh, that one is gonna be a very crowd-pleasing event. I heard there's a, um, a segment, the Celebrity Challenge? Yeah, yeah, the Celebrity Challenge happens later in the day. Um, we're going to have a few celebrities. Um, we're going to have Michaela Cameron from HJ. Um, we're going to even have Christopher Jones. He's going to be competing. Uh, we even have a surprise uh, celebrity guest at the end uh, that we're going to uh, reveal to everyone. Um, so that should be quite exciting to watch. And what are some equipment that will be used on Sunday? Um, we'll have bars like the ones that we have around here. Um, we'll have Atlas Stone. Uh, which are strong man balls. We'll have um, the walls, we'll have kettlebells, boxes, that sort of thing. And if patrons want to participate in this challenge, can they do that? There's a spectator sport um, that will be going on throughout the day, so um, workouts that are very similar to what the athletes will be performing. Um, spectators will have a chance to do that, uh, to participate in that sort of thing, and there'll be prizes that'll be given out. We encourage everybody to come out and support uh, this year's fitness challenge. It's going to be bigger and better than the previous years, um, and it's going to be very exciting. Hope to see you guys there. And in total, how much athletes will be there? We'll have 24 men and 10 women. And as we continue with the entertainment guide, Box and Fouls' 14th annual Mash and Jufe party is all set for this Saturday and Sunday at Box and Community Centre Grounds. Yes, um, I must say um, it's the annual, the 14th annual Box and Fouls Mash, and um, 
juve actually you know the night before the match will always be the juve so we got a grand juve coming up where we feature some acts like lil rick from barbados we got also jomo and we got super a, that's for the first night Tomorrow night. Yeah, that's tomorrow night, which is Saturday, and this Sunday we got acts like Big Red, we got Samantha Grant, we got Stitchy One Man Band, Invasion, and Super A. You know the One Man Band fever is the thing going on right now, so we got like a little settlement that's going to happen for the aftermash party. Remember the mash is where we're going to be mashing from Melanie Market Square, heading to the um, railway embankment and to the village of Buxton. We expect a real huge turnout come this Sunday. Any floats? Yeah, we, we got floats and we are um, actually going to be starting like 1 p.m., which is 13 hours. Assembling um, 12, which is noon from um, Melanie Market Square. That's where we're going to be assembling before we move off. Of course, associate Juve with powder, paint, paint and water. We got all that. All powder, that. paint, water, we got all of that. Powder, paint. It's, a, it's not a fake Juve, it's a real Juve. So in talking about water, we got that. Paint, we got that. And for those who were worried about the paint, remember this paint is a juve paint. It can come off. We're ready for the road. And soca artist Big Red, who is slated to perform at the MASH after party, gave us a sample as to what you can expect. So ladies, if you're going to be coming out on Sunday, don't, if your husband calls, don't pick up the phone. Because we're having fun. No, you're giving blows. You're just having fun. When the fun done, then you're going to answer. You understand me? So I don't care if my, I don't care if my husband call. I ain't going home, not at all. Look, I jam in, I jam in. I, uh, so I'm having a good time. Um, of course, I'm going to be doing Guyanese wine. You know, people don't care what I, what I sing. Everybody want to hear uh, Guyanese wine. They want to hear a piece that. of that. Last year it was Bacchanal, went to Trini Carnival, play my soul day in the pouring rain. Hey, in the hot up with a spin, big ready band calling my name, music biting me and I feel to, guess what? That is when I tip it on a whip it on a shake it on a stick it on a tick it on a tack it on a roll it on a. GT girls, that's why. Mm -hmm. And all of that and more you can expect from <laughs> and much, much more, much, much more. <laughs> and that's all we have for you on this week edition of the Entertainment Guide. As always, I'm Rajesh Lak, and I encourage you to have fun and be safe. That's all we have for in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Freddie Kisun claims a Jagdian knows the killers who wreaked havoc at Lindo Creek in 2008. Fire destroys all boys' tank house, two left homeless. Barbie's teenager succumbs after ingesting a poisonous substance. And in court, a male sex worker remanded for robbery with a violence. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be broadcast later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours at 30 on Saturday, March 10. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.